So when we took the website down for scheduled maintenance, <laughs> right, um, we put in the website's place a contact form, right, and that said notify me when the website's back up or whatever. And, you know, you put in your name and your email address or your phone number, however you want to be contacted. You know how those things work. People were doing that. And I stopped keeping track of how many people I was letting down thousands and thousands of people ago because that list is just getting so big of disappointed sudsers that are anxiously awaiting the relaunch. A, I'm sorry about that. But two, uh, one came in, and this is how I know that it's gotten to like DEF CON, the worst of the DEF CONs, because uh, one came in today that instead of like a name in the contact form, it said, I'm out of soap, what do I do? And then with an email or whatever. And uh, that one caught my eye. And that 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 was, yep, all of the back stock that all of the Sudzers have been hoarding for ever. Everybody's running out of soap. So it's coming, you guys. I know, I'm sorry. This This soap will be on the website when it comes. And so, yay, it'll be here by summer. There's that to look forward to. And I will tell you more about this last summer soap in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 265 of 365 days of soap. Cool. And today we are doing the final in the rose collection for the summer line, but we're not using Sierra's because Sierra had three rose scents in their new collection, and I had already picked up this fourth because you guys had recommended it from Midwest Fragrance. That's what it's called. Yeah. And the scent that I picked up from them is called Rose Bouquet. And since I had already picked it up, thinking, well, you know, maybe a floral will work, whatever, and then Sierra had sent me their samples, and so I had to pick up all of those too, I thought, let's go ahead and put this one into the line as well and play around with the color scheme with all of this. Because we've been doing a lot of the rose colors and, you know, things that match really well with rose, but it felt like just too much rose. And so this particular scent did not really strike me as an absolute rose scent. I got notes of honeysuckle, I got notes of jasmine, I got notes of violet and all of that. So a really nice floral blend. And so I wanted to play with that using some different colors that maybe are not always seen in flowers, but you know, still fun to play with to really brighten up the line. So let's get to the video. We will talk more about the pour and my thinking and you know, see the end results and do all the things, you know, there. Okay, so this is the final in the rose collections, and we are using Midwest Fragrances Rose Bouquet. And look, none vanillin. It's about 5%, you know, usage, five and change. But look how dark that is already, just pouring it off. It's really dark. And so I knew right away that this was going to be a spicy fragrance to work with. Not like spice as in it like smells hot or whatever, because it smells like roses, like you would expect roses to smell like. That's what it smells like. But it, just the coloring of it, florals in general, here's the thing. In my experience, florals in general are always a little bit spicy. They don't play well 
in soap batter. They are known to rice or accelerate trace or seize. I mean, loads of problems can happen with florals just during the pour. But then also you have the secondary problem of also, you know, there's weeping and seepage and all kinds of, you know, interesting things. That might be, now that I think about it, one of the reasons why I don't mess with florals anyway. But I think really it just has more to do with the fact that I don't really like the smell of flowers, especially roses. But if you're into roses, this is a dead on, this is what roses smell like scent. So, you know, pick that up if you're into that kind of thing. Let's pour this. So the no vanillin content in this suggests that none of this, that the colors aren't going to change. I don't know if it's going to change because of other reasons, because I don't ever look that up. I like to, you know, fly blind with the things that I pick up, really. But also I look at it when I order it. And so I mostly assume that I am not picking up one that's going to discolor unless, you know, it's just, anyway. So I thought that I would have zero problems with making the base of this white and then putting in okay so here's kind of what I was thinking about doing with this unfortunately it was impossible to do from jump because actually this batter looks pretty fluid and okay but when I was pouring it it was already getting clumpy and weird and a little bit too thick but my thinking on this was I was going to layer down the blue and the green and the yellow over the top of that hanger and do a pull to, you know, like the Christmas tree pour thing from Anne Marie, like a decade ago. What was that sound? Oh, my trash can finally emptied on the computer. I spent four hours getting enough space on this hard drive for this one last video on this hard drive before I move everything over to just editing and keeping all of my stuff on the, the server because I got a server for Christmas. Like it's a whole ass server with hundreds of terabytes of storage. And I guess that was the, the final deletion of the things that I needed to delete from the hard drive in order to make this video. Anyway, uh, Anne Marie's uh, Christmas tree pour from like a decade ago. You put the, 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 the hanger down at the bottom of the mold and you pour some lines over it and then you pull it out and in nature of pulling it out, it kind of forms a Christmas tree. So my thinking on this was I wanted to do that for the lower part of the bar. And so that's kind of like stems and stuff coming off of, and then do like a teardrop pour, which is kind of what I'm doing now. But the soap batter got so thick so fast and it's just getting really like ricey and it's that I couldn't actually do that. And nothing is kind of moving the way that I wanted to. So I kind of had to just adjust on the fly and ultimately just get all of the soap batter into the mold. So this basically becomes kind of a nothing pour when it's all said and done because this soap batter is like way too thick to actually really be moved by this hanger whenever I decide to pull it out. It's, it's too thick. And you know, that's unfortunate, but we've talked about this before in soap pours and I understand that like if you're a new soaper you might be freaked out about this process when things don't go right do you see that do you see the clumpies yeah this thing was this was a spicy scent this did very interesting things to my batter for sure but like as a new soap maker if you have this design in mind and I've seen it so many times like people are posting their quote unquote fails on the soap forums and it's perfectly gorgeous soap. But you know, to the person who poured it and wanted it to look a different way specifically, they look at it as a fail. And I get the anxiety and the fear of things going, you know, pear shaped or whatever in the middle of a pour if you're a new soaper or hell if you're an old soaper, but you know, I'm not freaking out and going any faster with any of this. This is just me still continuing to lay things into the mold, trusting the process. And that process is my recipe is on point. It's a good oil blend. The colors are nice. 
the scent is nice. It's all still going to work out. It's going to become soap first and foremost. That's the most important bit. It's going to become soap, but the design and whatever still probably going to be pretty, even if it's not what I set out to do. And that's okay. Like, don't beat yourself up over pores not going exactly the way that you wanted them to. Because you can't control everything in life. And in the soap making world, there's... Especially the way that I do it, when just... Oh, let's make a complicated design with a floral that will probably accelerate and do weird things because that's what florals do. You know, it's fine. Just, just keep going. Trust the process. It's still going to become soap. It's still going to be beautiful in a different way than I intended. Now, these little toppers are using the same colors that I used for the interior colors of the soap swirls, which is... Hold on. Let me get it. Key West blue for the blue. Tahitian teal for the green. And bright yellow raincoat for the yellow all from Mad Micah's. So there you go. There are the colors. But yeah, it's still going to be cool soap. It's still going to be fun. And, you know, it's not at all going to look like what I planned for it to look like, which is kind of like a flower, like literally growing. But that's okay. I bet it's still going to be fun. And, you know, I have learned over the many, many moons of me doing this to cut myself some slack because nobody but you cares. <laughs> like... The majority of people don't even buy soap for the design. And I've said multiple times, if the soap is too pretty, they're not going to buy it at all because they would feel bad about using it. You need to find to strike that nice balance between like visually appealing and not offensive, sure, but also not so gorgeous that people just feel like it should be some sort of art piece that they have to sit on their counter and never use. And you know, striking that balance is kind of difficult. But that's really where you should always be aiming for if you're looking to sell your soaps. Although, there's a whole new series coming out with the soap world that the kids suggested that's going to be 100% just soap art and not at all functional. So... Okay, and on to the cut. And I almost never do this, but I did want to show you my my liner. Now, I usually reuse my liners until they do that, but I had only used this liner for one other soap. That was it, just one other soap. And this fragrance seeped so much that it started eating away at the liner for the soap. And so I only got two pores out of this liner and I'm feeling very not eco-friendly after this. But you know, how was I to know? Also, this soap, freaking rock hard. 12 hours after pouring it, it is rock hard. There is, I mean, it, it's work to get the actual cutter through it. Like, I, do you see me struggling? I, I'm a strong girl. That was a lot. Like, it is a very hard bar of soap. I thought that my cutter wires were going to actually break. And there's the interior. And again, it's not at all what I was planning on. Like, not at all. But also, isn't it cute? It's totally cute. It completely works. And so, you know, it's not a fail by any stretch of the imagination. The colors are there. The scent is there. Interestingly, even though this scent did uh, weep so much, and so, like, I lost a lot of scent on the outside of the bar... It still smells really, really strong and potent. So, it's fine. That said, I, I soaped it at almost the maximum allowance for this particular fragrance. Because I soaped it at 5%, like I do all of my scents. Unless it says to soap it less. In which case, I just don't buy it. Like, I don't buy fragrances that uh, say don't soap at anything more than, you know, 1 or 2%. I don't buy those. Because they just, I, 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 I don't mess with them. Anyway, those are all pretty soaps. They're all very, very different from each other. It's all of them, you very unique bars. 
you can definitely do some cool like roar shocks in there like what do you see i see a bird i see, whatever and so they're beautiful it's just not exactly what i had planned for this but that's okay still gorgeous and so it all worked out and you know at the end of the day, if the worst thing, like there's no discoloration in any of this, the soap batter didn't actually seize, but it super did accelerate. Um, the weeping is a thing, but if that's the worst thing that you can say about this, that's eh, fine. It's fine. Buy it. If you like roses, it's a good scent. Buy it. There's no discoloration. Uh, thin pores, like thin batter pores that really, this needed a nice thin batter to actually accomplish what I wanted it to do you're gonna have some issues with that but everything else no i mean i think it's fine so if you like roses this is definitely a good scent for sure see how hard that is there oh my god it's wild anyway i am hoping that this video actually gets up right before the soap chef goes live like you know 20 minutes before the soap chef goes live so if you're watching it and it's right before 5 p.m pst or whatever time she's doing this um you head over there because i'm over there enjoying the live on saturday night right before easter of 2022 today's the 16th don't don't do that if you're watching this on sunday but yeah there's day 265 yeah so as soon as i looked at that fragrance as soon as i poured it out of the bottle and saw just how dark colored it was and then like smelled it in a bigger form with a bigger you get it and just knew that fragrance was going to be spicy like it was going to not play well in the soap batter and it really didn't it really did not play well um the the seeping and how hard that bar got completely and totally wild but all things considered if that's the worst thing that you deal with with a floral because florals are just historically known to accelerate trays, to possibly separate, rising, seize, all the jazz. If that's the worst thing that I can say about this, game on. Buy a whole bunch. Yeah, if you like florals, this is a good one to work with. Just know that you are going to end up with a little bit of weeping problems. Your bars are going to be very hard very quickly. And um, you might have some problems with really thin batter designs. So... Just keep that in mind, work with it. It's definitely a good scent to work with. Smells great after uh, saponification and cure. We did not see pop this either because you know I had the things on top. So there was that and uh, retained the scent and the colors are ab absolutely gorgeous. All the things, really delightful line across the board. I'm very excited to get to work on the bath bombs and all the other things for this line for sure. If you're interested in seeing what I do for the bath bombs and all the other things, you know, subscribe. That would be epic. For those of you who have subscribed, Hey Sudzers, you're epic. You are so amazing. Have you worked with this rose bouquet from Midwest Fragrance before? I always forget their name. I like it. I think it's really nice. The suggestions that you guys gave me a couple months ago during a live, I've actually enjoyed all of them. And I have another weirdly floral line coming out involving lavender pretty soon because you guys suggested so many different lavender blends from them and I want to give them their fair shake too. So there's that. I am actually out of here for two day. Uh, the whole website thing really does have me, has had me. It's been heavy on my mind, but you know, I had to, I had to pick my priorities really. But at this point, it's to the point where I really can't continue putting this off because I am actively letting people down and that sucks. I don't like letting people down. So I'm going to go work on the website. So I'm out of here for two day, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.